Hi everyone, and welcome to this tutorial by Frox is Not Included, which is all about the Frosty Planet Pack DLC's Geothermal Power Plant. Now before I even get started, I need to clarify that this video is not about geothermal power, meaning power from natural magma or volcanoes. Instead, I covered this in its own tutorial bite linked in the card, so see that if that's what you're looking for. So the topic here is the geothermal power plant buildings, made up of one geothermal heat pump and three geovents. They're probably best referred to as points of interest, as they are not story traits, and only spawn on the Frosty Planet Pack specific starts, so the series asteroid or clusters. As fully using these buildings gives the full steam ahead achievement, that means that currently you can only get this achievement on these starts. With that explained, let's look at the buildings then. These are actually quite simple, and they are found at the bottom of a series planetoid. The geothermal heat pump building is quite large, and needs to be manually reconnected by a dupe and repaired with 1200 kilograms of steel. That means you'll need steel already, but steel and plastic are also needed to harness the power anyway, and for help with getting these, see the dedicated tutorial byte. Then the three geovents also need to be toggled to be activated as well. Once working, the geothermal heat pump really only does one thing. It takes in liquids through its three liquid input ports, so at a rate of up to 30 kilograms per second. Then it magically sends this to the active geovents, changing its temperature, adding small amounts of new materials and deleting some of the input material, and I'll cover the specifics shortly. On to the geovents. After these are activated, they are then able to shoot out the heated or cooled input material and impurities. But one vent is blocked, and to get this out means inputting hot liquid to melt it, so I would recommend starting with this task first. Doing this is also how to get the full steam ahead achievement. To unblock the geovent, you'll need 12,000 kilograms of liquid over 180 degrees Celsius. A simple way to do this is by passing oil through a metal refinery making steel, and then straight into the geothermal heat pump but this will take a little while to make the fairly large amount of oil. With the first hot batch entered, you can then fully activate the heat pump and a little video will play for the achievement, which I won't spoil here. Then with this unlocked, the key to these buildings then is making and using a useful output. So let's look closer at how these buildings work, and it does so in 12 tonne batches. I'm also going to show two example inputs here to help explain how this works in practice. Once the heat pump takes in 12 tonnes in total of liquids, the average temperature is calculated, but this takes into account the specific heat capacity of each liquid, so liquids with high specific heat capacities count more. Then if the temperature is below 1377 degrees Celsius, 150 degrees is added up to a maximum of 1377 degrees. This explains the first and main use of these buildings, which is to make heat and therefore power. If the input temperature is already above 1377 degrees, then instead 150 degrees is removed down to a minimum of 1377 degrees. Either way, at this point 8% of the input is deleted, and then the rest is sent to the geovents. These output at a rate of 15 kilograms per second each, so even though the buildings work in 12 tonne batches, the inputs and outputs are rate limited, so together they act like a continuous process. The final thing that then gets added to the output is impurities. These are bonus materials which get added to each batch based on its input temperature. Here's the full list, and as long as the liquid input temperature is high enough, these will spawn. So that means for example, igneous rock, granite, obsidian, salt water and polluted water will always spawn for any liquid batch. Adding these to my two examples looks like this, and note that the materials outputted will appear at the output temperature meaning they take their solid, liquid or gas form based on this. This also shows the second, theoretical use for the geothermal power plant, which is in making rare resources, possibly even including fullerene and niobium, both of which are space materials. So having understood how they work, the last thing to cover is how to harness the geovents, and of course this will depend on whether we're using water input for power, or a hotter liquid for impurities. Let's start with a more common case of water, and here we'll feed in one full input of water at 10 kilograms per second. You can also double and triple this with more pipes, and I'll cover those numbers shortly. In general, we can assume it will come in around 95 degrees, 
as this is the output temperature of a steam turbine. And speaking of steam turbines, these are what will need to generate power and recover the water. As each one can handle up to 2 kilograms per second of steam input, we need 5 of these for each water pipe input to the geothermal heat pump building. These will make power, and the average power output of the geovents with 10 kilograms per second of water input is around 4000 watts, so it's quite powerful. As always, these need to be cooled, so an AquaTuna cooling loop deals with this, as I covered in the cooling tutorial byte. Then the water collected by the turbines is piped out and reused in the geothermal heat pump building. But you can also use some of this water to cool the aqua tuner. I recommend taking the steam turbine output and running it through a liquid vent by the aqua tuner. Then use a thermosensor to open this vent when the temperature is above 200 degrees. The last thing to cover for this design then is the water return. Of course you want to feed back in the steam as water, but remember that 8% is deleted. So unless you top this up, then the system will run dry. A simple way to solve this is to bridge on another water supply, taken from some other source on the map, and I've included a second bridge from the steam turbine to set the direction. This extra water will top up the loop and prioritise the water already in the system, but I also found that leaving it like this can cause the steam room to overfill. So to solve this second problem, I suggest a liquid shutoff for the extra water supply that's controlled by an Atmo sensor set to allow more water in if the steam pressure is below 20 kilograms. And with that in place, the system will now work and generate quite a bit of power at the cost of 133 kilograms per cycle of water for each full pipe input. Overall that's quite a good deal, especially given how easy it is to find water sustainably. As I mentioned earlier, this is just for one water pipe, but you can use two or three. In this case you should get about 8 or 12 kilowatts, and remember to add 5 steam turbines for each pipe used. Plus this system does generate some impurities too, and each cycle, one full pipe makes 25 kilograms of igneous rock, 25 kilograms of granite, 25 kilograms of obsidian, 11 kilograms of salt, 2 kilograms of sand, and 63 kilograms of rust. Last up then, the other way we can in theory run this is for impurities. I will warn here that this use is much more theoretical than practical because there are so many practical challenges in making a working build. This is because the input temperature for the rarest impurities is very high indeed at 2227 degrees celsius. And even if you don't aim for these very highest, the maximum temperature a thermium gas or liquid pump can work in is 975 degrees which isn't even close. The first thing to work out is what liquid to use as we want one that is still a liquid above 2300 degrees celsius and can actually be gotten from somewhere. That already limits our choice to a few molten metals, so the most obvious liquids we can use are molten iron, molten gold or molten cobalt, or possibly molten niobium or molten tungsten in the spaced out DLC, and all of these are made renewably in metal volcanoes. But a big obvious problem is that none of these sources can be found on series planetoids or on the rusty oil planetoids that the teleporter links them to, so that means we'd have to bring in liquid metals with rockets, and at that point, if we're doing it for only small amounts of niobium and fullerene, you may as well get these from the outer planetoids with the rockets instead. So this explains why this idea doesn't really make sense in practice, but I did try and make a design for this which seems to work. I did find that it's basically impossible to pump the input liquid back out because a thermium pump simply overheats, and if you use the magma style pump, as I showed in the moving materials tutorial byte, the input gets blocked by the many different liquids. That means the only practical way I found to run this is to simply cool the entire area with steam turbines, but that doesn't make a continuous loop, so you need a constant new supply of hot liquid. That's why molten metals make the most sense, as their volcanoes constantly make a new liquid at the right temperature, but overall you'll still need to constantly import these liquid metals to get tiny amounts of space materials, so it's much easier to just get the space materials directly and in larger quantities. So in my opinion, this usage remains a cool idea, but not something that can be effectively used in practice. Now this build I'm showing is just something I made and tested quickly, so it seems to work, but you may need to make some changes in practice but is a helpful example to help me explain some tips for actually taming this, if you are adventurous enough to give this a go. Just a warning here though, building something like this is quite an advanced build, so I wouldn't recommend this to less experienced players. I did find that 3 steam turbines was just about enough, 
but there's no reason why you can't add more to this design. The idea is to keep the pumps, auto sweepers, conveyor loaders and aqua tuners under 975 degrees Celsius so that they don't overheat when made out of thermium. The water return from the turbines is important and I found these work better near any machines close to the geovent. Also note that I'm controlling one of the liquid vents with an Atmos sensor set to open if below 20 kilograms per tile. This is because each batch has some extra steam, so if you don't deal with this, then everything will overpressure in the long run. When the vent is closed, the water is taken out of the system to be used elsewhere. And of course it should go without mentioning that the steam turbines are cooled by the aqua tuner in the steam room and its cooling loop, and I've put in super coolant just to make sure this keeps up. The good thing about running the design like this though, is that most of the geovent outputs are either solid or gas. The solids are easy to deal with using the auto sweepers, as long as you can get them in range and cool enough. To sort out the gases, I've added two pumps. One high for the hydrogen that floats up, and one low for the sour gas that sinks down. These have some usual automation with two gas element sensors set to detect for the right gas, and an AND gate. This makes sure only these gases are pumped out and not the steam. Note that in this example I've taken the material straight out, but they will still be extremely hot, so even more cooling will likely be needed to actually use these materials. The most annoying material in here is lead, which tends to sit as a liquid in most of the room, making it harder to get rid of. That's why I've included a liquid pump below, but this won't be used very much at all, and I've really just included it to be thorough. And so that's it for this guide to the geothermal power plant in the Frosty Planet pack for option not included. I hope this helps you harness these powerful buildings in your bases, and thanks for watching.